Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Hello, this is Clyde J. Kell, and I'm here with two lovely ladies, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and this is the Artist Friends Podcast for December the 16th, episode 26. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Okay, tonight uh, the podcast may be intermittent because we have some technical issues. I guess it's the weather or whatever. It's given the uh, internet uh ha- wreaking havoc on our on our connection so we may have a uh highly edited podcast <laughs> our conversation gets cut off in the middle or something the theme for this uh this week's podcast was actually based on an old song from the 1970s from the uh, mama and the papas it's a song of uh, make your own music. And it really hit me. I came across that song on YouTube looking for some other stuff. And I'm not going to sing the song to you folks. I'm not going to play it either. But the theme is it really applies to artists that we have to make our own music, make our own way. And regardless of anybody else wants to sing along with us, we have to keep on going. So that's where the, the recommended videos for us to watch is uh, kind of centered around that theme. Diane, uh, what do you think about those videos? Uh, got any comments you want to start off with? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of on the same thing as last. I mean, the song is kind of on the same thing as we ended up talking about last week. Is being you know yourself and being true to your own vision and your own doing your own thing, and I think you know that's kind of it is really important to be to, to do that and to be able to um, keep that vision even when you're working like you get pressure from galleries or other artists or you know what's selling or you know you have all these di- different things that try to influence and change what you're trying to do and sometimes it's really hard to put all that stuff on the, you know, keep it all in the back and not let it influence and change what you're doing. Exactly. And it also creates self-imposed limitations, you know, yeah, it, uh, you start, uh, you know, especially on Facebook and Instagram or social media sites, you see these other artists, they post images and they say it's sold today, you know, it's, 
I wonder about some of those. How much of that is just, they're just, you know, posting for the sake of posting? The thing is with social media of any kind is, you know, people post what they want to want other people to see. So that, that's the problem that, you know, everybody has, even like with regular people on Facebook and stuff, they think that everybody else has these wonderful lives because that's all anybody is posting, the, the great parts. <laughs> and they're not posting all the crap and the stuff that happens in the, you know, the normal kind of <laughs> So people you know, look at it and you think, wow, they have such an amazing life, but, it, you know, it's not actually true <laughs> i've i've got to admit uh several years ago when my two daughters were really getting on facebook and i got really concerned and uh had some definite video conversations with them that uh because they were posting some very wonderful videos and everything and i just point blank and I said do you think this is real they are very level-headed no it's not <laughs> in fact my youngest star so far has gotten has posted so many memes of of this is reality and this is and this is the instagram picture <laughs> i mean she she has just gone nuts with stuff like that you know finding things so they're both very level-headed they do know that a lot of it is fake news it's fake yeah, and I was very concerned about that when I saw them, you know, post in their costumes. Do you want to add to add to this? Well, Diane's right. You know, I mean, somebody that's posted something that sells for a lot of money, and you know, maybe they've had a couple of nice, great sales, but you know, how many paintings do they have sitting in the garage that didn't didn't make that? You know, I mean, we all have to go through those lists of. How long did it take us to get to that point where we could sell something for that? You know, so. Absolutely. I think Stephen Bauman, he, uh, in one of his video, he talks, he talks about, you know, you, uh, you see these, uh, these, uh, artists that are now famous and they're selling their works for outlandish money. But what you don't see is the thousands and thousands sometimes of pieces that are in storage sheds <laughs> that didn't sell or that are probably not going to sell. <laughs> right. You know, you know, so. Well, eventually when, when they pass away, their relatives will get it and then they end up in uh, garage sales and yard sales and thrift shops. And, you know, maybe well, nobody's excited about posting a bad painting that they did, you know, but when you <laughs> sell one and it was a good painting, you're excited. And so you post it, you know, so that's, that's it doesn't wrong with that, you know, but let's, yeah. let's keep, let's keep a level head, head about it. But getting back to, uh, the, the uh, video recommendation. There was also, I recommend some, uh, our friend, uh, Sergio Gomez, you know, and I always like when he talks, he says, my friend, <laughs> it's like our friend, yeah, Sergio Gomez. And he uh, was in, I guess, Barcelona a few months ago. He did a, you know, a breakfast with Sergio's video and he was talking about your art marketing calendar for 2020. Yeah. And that's an idea that I never really thought of. What do you guys think about it? Did you find that informative? Well, we had talked about it at some point of, of going through and trying to um, create some kind of plan for the, for next year, but we haven't really, you know, formally done it or talked about that much. About right. it. It's something that we should probably. I, I'm, yeah, we've only got what two more podcast dates before the end of the year, so I'm thinking maybe the on the last one we would definitely knuckle down, set set some goals for ourselves, maybe. Yeah, set the goals and everything. But what he was talking about was l looking throughout the year of like either holidays or events, and if your art falls in line with that that you create, or like introducing a, a new series that is a theme of that event or, or that holiday. That was really wonderful. I, I've never thought that far in advance. I really haven't. And really well, it makes sense to, I yeah, mean, and sitting down and that actually gives you a bit of a plan. Of course he recommended, he, I guess he's going to do a, some kind of a challenge, you know, in January and he, you know, recommended signing them for, for his challenge to, uh, you know, create a, a mark, a marketing ca uh, calendar. 
but uh I started one last year and I have it up, but you know, and I put down things that I wanted to do, but it's kind of hard to see. I don't going to say what it is. It's just a page for each month. And I write things on the page on the, you know, a monthly thing. And it's the uh, eight by 11 piece of paper that you run through your printer, but uh, it does help you keep organized. But, um, I was wondering if maybe I shouldn't just get a big calendar that I can put on the wall there so I can see all 12 months and then put down what I need to get done by what month. Yeah, that and works for you. Things are gonna, things are going to come, you know, maybe I should search around and see what I'd like to try to do and maybe, you know, sort of yeah, I didn't see know all you, 12 months, it might be able to help me more. You had, you had your current calendar. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah for something you know and it so you're in that and actually you're you're doing a marketing a, a type of a marketing calendar already you know and that, yeah that's that's yeah. that's excellent diane i guess we got to catch up with that you know see <laughs> do that too i have a, a wall calendar that i do it on but um i wanted to expand that and make a bigger one because you don't have room to write all the stuff in it's like yeah kind <laughs> of fit all the different shows and deadlines and all that stuff there's not enough room yeah so you two are still i was up. looking around here trying to find a place because i don't i can't get at the wall but i would like to have a place on the wall that i can put like all of the months up like that at one time and then i can put post-its on it so, so you can see all the months at once you know you kind of go oh i've got, only got so much much time before this is coming in you know? yeah 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 you two are showing me up i don't have anything like that <laughs> I've, got, I've got a spiral bound notebook i i write in sometimes most of the time it's on scraps of paper that i just got laying around on my desk here by the computer <laughs> you need one of those little composition books those are good to write in but even so it's hard to keep track of everything it is it's something that we all struggle with i guess and it's yeah you have to come up with your own method whatever works best for you yeah i've got well i've got a ton of those but yeah that's true on your own <laughs> Yeah, like deadlines and shows are and all that kind. Of, I mean, there's a lot of yeah. Lot especially of now that I'm, uh, you know, entering in these uh, these online art contests and exhibitions, I've uh, I've got to definitely. I think I'm I've got to set something up like that so that I don't miss deadlines because I've got some coming up that it's a good thing that I I checked. I've got some uh, a couple contests I want to enter uh, that are for January, but the the deadline is like in December. I don't even have the art ready yet you know, for, yeah. for those. And, and the only reason why I even know about those is, is I received an email reminded me. It's, oh yeah. Oh my God. I forgot all about that. You know? And you know, one of them is paid and, and two of them are free, you know, and especially the free ones I don't want to miss, you know, free yeah. of cost. I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, those are. shows that are, I really want to not miss. <laughs> I'll put the deadlines and things in my phone. So I, I set my, myself reminders, like, mm -hmm. you know, out or two months out or however long I need. And yeah, and your phone is, is good for that too. Yeah. 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 I've I got, don't know why I don't use the phone, but I don't. I do better if I see it on the wall or something. So same way with me, you know, I'm a more, you would think I'm, I think it's old school My computers yes. all the time, but I, I, I do better with the stuff written down, you know, than, than, uh, on the computer. However, I'm on this list of these, uh, different, uh, galleries and different shows now that they send me reminders. Thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with my, I mean, I get so many emails from so many places. I miss a lot of things from my yeah. email. So, or I find I do. So, I mean, it depends on how much time I have because I don't always have time to go through all my emails. I know, I get that can be a problem. Behind and then you miss things. So yeah. that's why I stuff in my phone. So then it reminds me about it and then I can go check it, you know, check the email, see if I've gotten one or something for that particular show or whatever it is. Yeah. But. Ex yeah, exactly. The, of course, as I've mentioned before my my process i'm on my computer all the time and if i'm not programming uh shows for my internet radio station then i'm doing something that is uh marketing related and i check my email i've got notifications that pop up on a computer when i receive an email so i keep up on my on my email and i get yeah i get tons and tons of 
junk email, you know, and, and I know it right away. It was, you know, if, if and, but I also, I have to check my spam side, uh, box because some of the emails I want to read, they, they jump into spam. So I have yeah. to, you know, and that's like this one about this contest coming up here. You know, there's a deadline the 27th and it's a free contest and, uh, you know, no, no fee to enter. And if you, if you, uh, are selected, it's an online, you know, magazine with a wide distribution. So that's, it's important. Yeah. And if it doesn't, you know, cost anything, it's, it has, it's in the same category as the Faso uh, bold brush, you know, uh, contest, which gives you wide, you know, wide recognition. And, uh, I don't want to miss those. Those are, Hey, no, that's something I want to sign up for is the, uh, Faso thing because it's they're having a special for the first year right now in December. So it's going to have to. You got a big, red, a big red notice on your calendar about that. Not to miss that deadline. <laughs> I got a big red notice in my brain about it. <laughs> if I just quit having migraines, I'm at least two or three days a week right now to a migraine. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's not fun. Yeah, we were talking before we were recording, folks, and we've uh, this week it seemed like uh, all of us had hit a little bit of uh, health issues. And I'm sorry, we're old, you know. That just goes <laughs> with being old. <laughs> no, the migraines aren't because I've had them all my life. But yeah. <laughs> in my case, I think it's a, it's age related. You know, they just hit you. And it's so depressing because then you 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 it's hard to get motivated to create something when you're in pain yeah that's uh that's life hey we're not complaining that's that's life you know if we have all of our young listeners saying god a bunch of old people there yeah yeah right <laughs> well, it anybody though you can have an, an injury or you know some kind of some i mean an auto accident or anything like you know and they can get derailed knock you, on, knock you on your ass for a little bit and you, you know do things that you're not expecting like that and it's like you have to be able to um jump back from it uh, as best you can and and try to make plans for things when they happen like that so that stop completely maybe that's why that song uh make you know make your own music uh hit me because i was suffering this week and then i came across that song it kind of lifted my spirits a little bit you know that uh yeah that's what I'm doing. I'm making my own music and I really don't care if anyone else sings along. <laughs> you know, well, it's nice if they do. <laughs> it's nice if they do, but Hey, you know, <laughs> um, let's see. God, we have successfully, uh, talked a good 15 minutes here. This podcast is almost over with. Let's see if we have any, uh, any tips of the week. Other than, yeah, Costas, you never offered one last week. You haven't offered one in a while. What's your tip? Don't be making those faces. <laughs> I'm like a deer in the headlights right now. <laughs> I don't have one. You don't have one? Come on. You just told one about the, the calendar on the wall type thing. Talk about that or something. Yeah, I recommend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Do like a New Year's resolution to to get a calendar going and uh, and uh, keep record of when things are going to expire that you want to be in and uh, just make a yearly calendar so you can keep track of what's going on in your life and set some goals on it and try to get them accomplished. Excellent. Yeah. So yeah, for for your new year, you know, be thinking about it now before the year ends. Um, yeah, as a New Year's resolution, like Costa said, you know, before the year is out, uh, get yourself maybe a wall calendar or or a planner or, or something, and uh, uh, look over the year of events, exhibitions, or contests, or series of artwork that you want to complete and set that up and uh, write it down and commit to it. And there you go. As Sergio Gomez recommends, you've got your art marketing calendar. Yep. One last thing before we go. 
Uh, I did recommend a video of Sergio's opinion on the uh, banana art incident, Art Basel. Funny. What did you guys like? That? He had a different take. I did not expect what he had said. You know, when, when he recommended, he said, uh, people worry, you know, said, is the art market going crazy? And he talked about, he says, what you, in the frame of mind, the art market, instead of thinking about like the environment of art Basel, you know, the, the high end collectors and high end artists is your, the art market for you is your art market, your, cir your circle of friends, your circle of artists, that is your art market. And if you are creating art that you enjoy and that they enjoy, then you have a successful art market. Do you guys uh, catch that when he was talking about that? Yeah, I think that's true to, to a certain extent. I mean, because that's who the people are that are following you, that are, you know, you're interacting with and that you meet in your local area. And so, yeah, I mean, you are, you are that air that is your market <laughs> the people that you know and i mean you can expand that to other areas but that's kind of where you start is the people that you know and as you grow as an artist then you're you're right your market will expand you know so don't get upset about the uh the clowns and the uh the art market <laughs> as they say the high-end art market yeah and, of course, if you've been following on Facebook, the, the banana memes are just going nuts. I've been enjoying it. Artists, uh, a lot of artists have some good sense, yeah. sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Ta taping, taping cats to wall. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. One guy, artist, he drew a cat taped to the wall with a banana hanging out of his mouth. I saw him one. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> they're just going nuts in fact and then he said even instagram he said the same gallery that had presented that artist created a, a new instagram account with all of the banana memes <laughs> i haven't checked that out yet but I, <laughs> that's funny yeah at least they're having you know some people have a good sense of humor you know quit quit the rage quit the ranting <laughs> hey have fun with it i think we're going to end this episode this is ep episode 26 of the Artist Friends Podcast for December 16th. And I've been here talking with uh, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And good night, Diane. Good night, Clyde. Good night, everyone. Good night, good night Constance. Time. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. And thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Drostan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constant Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.